This is the archery stadium at the 2016 Rio Olympics in Brazil. The women's archery quarterfinals are being played. Among them, the match between the world's best Korean archer and the world's 18th ranked Mexican player looked like no surprise. But the result is the victory of the Mexican player. The key factor of this situation was the wind. Suppose the bow is an aircraft and the target is a runway. Assuming so, it is easy to understand the meanings of the wind, which can be their helper or disruptor. Generally, controllers issue a taking off or landing clearance as follows. Runway 36, wind 360 at 5, cleared for takeoff. Runway 18, wind 020 at 10, cleared to land. The first number after the wind is the direction of the wind, made of three numbers and based on the runway. The second number is a wind speed. The emitted unit of speed is not. When the controller gives the pilot a wind speed of less than three knots, the phraseology wind calm is used. Well then, why does the controller give the pilot only wind information during the landing and departure phase? The best friend and worst enemy of the aircraft, the story of the wind begins. The wind blowing in front of the aircraft is a headwind, and the wind from behind the aircraft is a tailwind. Wind blowing from the side is a crosswind. Let's take a quiz here. What is the aircraft's favorite wind among these? The answer is a headwind. Let's start by looking at the principle of aircraft lift, the most necessary force for taking off in order to understand the assistance of the headwind. The aircraft's wings are flat on the bottom and round on the top. Since the airflow occurs continuously, the air that starts respectively at the top and the bottom of the wing's front part eventually arrives on the back of the wings simultaneously. This means that the flow of air flowing through a round surface should be faster than the air flowing on a flat side. Let's apply this theory to Bernoulli's law. The upper surface of the wing is reduced in pressure due to the high air speed, and the bottom of the wing is increased in pressure due to the slow air speed. Since the pressure moves from high to low, an upward force is created from the bottom. This force is the aircraft lift. The stronger the wind, the faster the air flows, and the wings get the power to keep from being pulled up. In other words, aircrafts can get a bigger lift with the help of a headwind. This is not the only thing. Even when landing, headwind is an aircraft helper. In order for an aircraft to land on a runway of a certain length, the landing distance must be shortened with minimum airspeed. To make the minimum airspeed smaller, aircraft use a flap when landing. In addition to the aid of a flap, landing with a headwind gives aircrafts more aircraft lift to reduce the landing distance. Also, when the headwind blows, drag force occurs. As a result, wind resistance increases the braking effect. A tailwind is also a good friend of aircrafts. The tailwind pushes the cruising aircrafts from behind, so tailwind helps speed up and improve fuel efficiency. Why is the wind a good friend? Wind increases lift force, reduces the takeoff and landing distance, helps speed up, and improves fuel efficiency. Story 2. The wind, a friend of the aircraft, turns into an enemy. Sometimes a tailwind is the enemy. During takeoff and landing, the tailwind reduces lift force, making the takeoff and landing runway distances longer. This could lead to running off the runway. According to statistics, runway length increases 10% per two knots of tailwind. With this formula applied, the required runway length increases up to 50% when 10 knots of tailwind are blown. This is not the only danger. Landing with the tailwind increases the minimum speed. That's why pilots are forced to use the brake stronger than usual. This situation causes damage to an aircraft and leads to loss of direction and control. A crosswind is always an enemy. The crosswind makes it difficult for aircraft to touch down the runway accurately. It makes it difficult to maintain aircraft direction even after landing. Crosswinds cause aircraft to abandon takeoff, go around, 
and even cancel operations. All airline companies strictly apply crosswind allowances for each type of aircraft. If the crosswind at airport exceeds the allowance, the pilot will either wait until the crosswind is reduced or divert to an alternate airport. There is an example of how dangerous crosswind is. On March 23, 2009, Japan's Narita International Airport was under gust and crosswind warnings. The MD-11 of FedEx's airline had departed from Guangzhou Bayon International Airport and was about to land at Narita. But the aircraft, unfortunately losing its balance due to the strong crosswind, hit the runway and caught in flames. As a result, all pilots died. At the time of the accident, there was a strong crosswind of about 40 knots. When the wind turns into a wind shear, it becomes the scariest fear. The wind shear is the combination of the wind and the shear. Shear means to cut an object by applying a force opposite to any surface of the object in parallel. In other words, wind shear is a phenomenon in which wind changes abnormally. The wind shear suddenly changes the direction or intensity of the wind in a short time, regardless of the altitude, and can occur both horizontally and vertically. Winds strike various terrains and then become irregular in the process of mixing into one, creating a powerful gust of wind. Wind shear can occur at all altitudes, but the most dangerous moment is within 2,000 feet of the ground. If aircrafts meet this phenomenon at high altitude, it can return to its place without high risk. However, it is difficult to respond if aircrafts meet an altitude of less than 2,000 feet above the ground. What's the aircraft doing in 2,000 feet? Of course, it's a section for taking off or landing. To make matters worse, if strong crosswinds or tailwinds suddenly blow, the lift will decrease significantly and the altitude will fall quickly. If a strong crosswind joins the downdraft, it might crash the aircraft. There are countless cases of aircraft going around or cancellations and accidents related to wind shear. In 1985, Delta Airlines Flight 191 that was about to land at Fort Worth International Airport in Dallas was crashed by wind shear. This accident has caused people all over the world to know how dangerous wind shear is. This change of awareness has led airports around the world to realize the needs for wind shear surveillance system. That's why Low Level Wind Shear Alert System was created. The low-level wind shear alert system installs ultrasonic wave wind direction and wind speed sensors around the airport, centering on the runway, to detect and analyze wind shear that occur at low altitudes around the runway. And the information detected in the sensor is displayed on the controller's display, and the controller passes it to the pilot of the aircraft taking off or landing. This system, a reliable and state-of-the-art aviation equipment, continuously evolves with version 3 currently in use. This equipment has the function of receiving, analyzing, and displaying wind data by real-time processing system. Most airports have 12 to 16 sensors around the runway. The airport with the largest number of sensors is Denver International Airport in Colorado, the U.S with as many as 32 sensors centered on the runway. In addition to most airports in the United States, many airports around the world operate on a low-level wind shear alert system. The equipment observes the wind shear up to 1,600 feet above the runway. Controllers have to inform departing and arriving aircraft of an alarm when they get the wind shear alarm from the display. Controllers use the words gain or loss to express the increase and decrease of airspeed. For example, Runway 36 Departure Wind Shear Alert 2 5 knots gain, 2 miles departure Runway 36 Arrival Wind Shear Alert 2 0 knots loss, 3 miles final According to regulations, controllers should provide information to the pilot at least 20 minutes after receiving the alarm for the first time. However, when wind shear occurs, the controller should not be the only one to provide information. A pilot who feels wind shear during takeoff or landing also should immediately notify the controller. This becomes important information for the safety of subsequent aircraft. 
In this video clip, we learned how the wind and aircrafts are related. What does wind mean for an aircraft? When the headwind blows, the wind becomes the most friendly friend. If it is a tailwind, the wind is both a friend and a disruptor. But the moment of a crosswind, it turns into an enemy. Lastly, wind shear is a scary enemy that aircrafts must avoid. Through these relationships, we can see why the controller issues the wind information to the pilot at the most important moment, the aircraft's takeoff and landing. Many airports all over the world invest huge amounts of capital to install wind surveillance equipments to prevent wind-related accidents. And by using these equipments, controllers are trying to give timely advices to aircrafts about dangerous winds. The wind cannot be controlled or predicted accurately by human power, but we have to adapt and deal with it. Why? Because the wind is part of the flight. We should use beneficial winds to make flying safer and more efficient. Also, avoid or overcome harmful winds to prevent accidents. Wind is the best friend and worst enemy of aircrafts. ATC for you.